Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, Director of Nature Reliance School, coming to you today to talk about hammocks and winter camping. We are getting a ton of good emails and messages on Facebook and YouTube about winter camping with a hammock. And there's a lot of justified concern in that you're up in the air, you got 360 degrees of air around you, and you don't have an insulating layer between your body and what's down here. And so you'll see a lot of hammock companies, they offer underquilts. Um, I don't know, I've never used one. I've never had need to use one. Uh, what we're running into, and I've told some people that, and they just argue the crap out of me, um, trying to convince me that I don't know what I'm talking about, and, and that's fine. Uh, everybody's entitled to their opinions. Uh, I just have a fair amount of experience without them, and I didn't need them, and so that's why I make my recommendations. So I'm going to tell you how I did that, and in hopes that you can come up with your own solution that works for you. Okay. So uh, shout out to Rich. Rich is the one that said, "Hey, man, you need to get this on camera. Uh, he, and you, you just need to get that camera up in the hammock and show you." So I'm going to talk about some things outside the hammock. Then I'm going to set up how I have done it the last two times where I have been in in the teens. Um, one time it got down to 18, another time it got down to 15. Both times there were 10 to 20 mile per hour winds and I didn't really have my good setup, what I call my good setup. I'll explain that in a minute. But here's what we've got. You got your hammock and if, if I had the ability to carry it with me, I'd carry the military sleep system. The military sleep system is basically two sleeping bags and a bivy sack. That's what you're seeing right there is just the bivy sack and uh, it's rated for well below zero, works well. Uh, if you got inside your hammock with that inside there, I think you'd be perfectly fine. Um, I've only done that once and got hot in cold weather. I, I just, I burn up in there. Uh, I just can't stand both those bags in that bivy in cold weather. But again, that weather's only like 15 degrees. It's not well below zero like they're designed for. Now what I have done recently, and this has worked really well, is I've got my super cheap uh, Teton bag. This is uh, like a 30 degree bag and inside of it I put and this happened by accident. We went on a trip where I, I thought it was going to be warmer than it was and then one night because sometimes we'll go out for five or six days and you know you can only forecast the weather out for two days for certainty. But uh, I keep this with me in case I ever had trouble or got in a pinch and I utilized it. This is the SOL um, I think they call it their OD Tactical Reflective Blanket Bivy Bag or something like that. Uh, I put this inside my sleeping bag and I slept with that, nothing else. Just that bag, just this bag, and nothing else, and I stayed warm. And again, it was 18 degrees, 15, 20 mile per hour winds. Um, something I have also done in the past is that, and if I had my druthers, I would have done it on that trip too, is I have a sleeping pad, I have a Thermarest sleeping pad. This is the Thermarest Trail Pro. It's a mummy bag and or a mummy pad and it fits nicely inside that bivy sack so I like it. It fits well in there. Now what I'm going to do is tell you about uh, uh, the thing that is really important you got to be aware of when you get in that hammock and number two I'm going to go ahead and set it up and we'll get up inside there with one other item which is a poncho liner and I'll tell you how I utilize it. Here's the situation, and if you know anything about first aid, you'll think, oh man, I never thought about it that way. So let's say you've got a wound on your feet, and uh, you've got a core body wound or something. You need a lot of blood flow to go to your core. Uh, you raise the feet, and blood will rush to the core. If you've got a, somebody that's going into shock, and you want a lot of blood to go back to their organs, you basically raise their feet, and the blood, due to gravity, goes down to the organs. Think about that for a second. Same deal is going on in this hammock. If you get in that hammock and you get in there such that, or you have a hammock that's got a lot of sway to it and your feet are way above your head, you're gonna reduce the amount of blood flow that's going into your feet. Now your core is gonna stay warm, but your feet are gonna get cold and your head's gonna get cold. So you need to invest some money in a nice hammock like a Hennessy or a war bonnet or something like that where in essence you basically lay in there flat and you don't have as much sway, okay? And this is the Hennessy. Uh, I'll have links for those in the in the description below. So 
make sure that when you get in there, your feet are not ex way up above your head so that you can help with the blood flow. As well as, usually when I get in there, I wear an Under Armour or a Power Fleece cap of some sort. Uh, I actually pull this all the way down over my ears, make sure I get my neck covered up as best I can with a sleeping bag or something else that I've got on. And then I get in my sleeping bag because you want your head to be warm and you want your feet to be warm. I even sometimes, if it's really cold weather, I will wear an extra pair of socks. Now, I'm not a big fan of wearing a lot of clothes when you get into a sleeping bag. I've talked about this many times, but it, it's, it's worth saying again. If you get in that bag and you've got a ton of clothes on, your body, which is the only heater that's in there, has got to heat up your body. It's got to heat up the first layer, second layer, fourth layer, fifth layer. Then it's got to heat up the sleeping bag, and then the sleeping bag gets to do what it's designed to do. So your body's got to put off a ton of heat before your sleeping bag ever does anything at all. So do as best you can to wear something that is covering your skin if you have to get in there with clothes on, like a polar fleece or a uh, polypro uh, uh, underlayer. Then get in your bag or get in without any clothes on at all. Okay. Now with that said, uh, keep that in mind, but I'm going to go ahead and set everything up inside the hammock and we'll do what we can. Now, the only thing that bothers me about this whole video is that what everybody's wanting to see is how I set this up in here. And uh, we'll see if we can get that camera up in there and show you. All right, so here we are, and I'm inside the Hennessy, looking down through it. This is the, right here, what you're seeing is the bug netting, and out there in front of me is the bottom of it. I've got my sleeping bag laid in here. That's right here. What I want you to note, and this is something I do, and I don't, I haven't heard anybody else doing this, and it works really well. If you'll notice right here, there's a ridge line that runs on the inside of this Hennessy. I'm not sure how many other hammocks have this. I really don't. I don't have enough hammocks. I've got one that works, and so I use it. So I am going to take that poncho liner that I just put out in front of you right there, and I'm going to drape it over top of this ridge line that runs inside the hammock, and then we'll talk about why I do that. So you'll notice on top of the ridge line, that's this right here. And I'm sorry for the shaky video. I just don't know how else to do this, Rich. And Rich had a good question, so I want to... I want to, and I think Rich understands. I just he wants me to show everybody else. I've got this ridge line. It's inside the tent. I've draped my poncho liner on top of it. So in essence, in this little cubby hole right here is where basically from the waist up you'll find me in the middle of the night. Now what's going to happen is up through here I'm going to breathe, and all that warm air is going to stay around my core body temp. First thing that comes to everybody's mind, and I had so many people argue with me about this, and I'm perfectly fine with the arguing. That's just okay, and, and it's all right for a lot of people to be wrong every now and then and for me to be right. Uh, with that said, um, basically what happens with the poncho liner, because it helps remove moisture, the inside of this will get have moisture from my breath, and it'll travel the outside, and then it'll freeze. That happens every time. So when I wake up in the morning, the inside of this is dry the outside of this is frozen uh, i don't know how many times i've done that i've done it several times now and it works extremely extremely well so um i also have a hill people gear mountain serape that i utilize for the same thing it's a little bit thicker and you could do this with a wool blanket you could do this with power fleece i just use poncho liner because they're so easy to carry and they, they are multi-use and i can tie them into a, a poncho rather easily too so again, I'm sorry if that, uh, I have no idea how that's going to play out when I get the video, the raw video back and try to process it. I hope it makes sense what I'm doing there. Uh, in essence, I've got that draped over that and it holds a lot of my uh, warm air that's coming from my body when I breathe. Um, that's an absolute no-no in a lot of places and I understand that. If you've got something cotton over your face, then what's going to happen is all that moisture is going to stay right there. My experience has been that even if that goes all the way and soaks all the way through with moisture, the whole thing freezes in real cold weather. I'm talking, you know, well below 32 degrees. And that 15 to 20 degree range, it just freezes and it doesn't have a, it doesn't cause a problem. So with that said, that's what I do for cold weather camping in my hammock. Now, if I had my druthers, again, if I had the ability, I'd put a sleeping pad in there just to protect me from the bottom. Okay, because what I've experienced thus far, and this is what everybody's um, problem is, is that your body compresses the sleeping bag and basically you don't have a real good insulating layer between yourself and the bottom of the bag. I mean the bottom of the hammock. And so if air comes through there, it's a big issue. Well, again, I pull 
the rain fly straight down so there's no wind that's getting on the bottom that's rushing across uh, the bottom of my bag as well as I have a flat bag that's a or a flat hammock that's where I can roll over if I get a little chilled I just roll over and then I roll over to the other side I can sleep on my sides and on my back in that hammock without any trouble I can't sleep on my stomach that's impossible in there but uh, it works really well um, so again if I'm looking for luxury in there I take the sleeping pad if I just need to get enough rest to get enough rest to be able to function as a human I just take what I've just described to you and it works extremely well so if you have any questions you have any uh, suggestions and throw them down below uh, again uh, you know we'll entertain whatever if you're gonna troll me just don't waste your time uh, I don't mind uh, people having differing opinions of mine as long as they're educated opinions of mine so I'm spending um, you know this year I'm I'm easily going to spend 150 nights out this year so if you're spending more time than that out then you probably got a more educated opinion than I do and if not then uh, how about we listen to me a little bit so with that said appreciate you and if you have any questions do not hesitate to put them in the comments below or send them to us in an email at info at naturereliance.org subscribe to the channel if you don't care share it on social media wherever you possibly do that and we really appreciate you come on join in let's learn together